Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Wheeler and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons because I always do talk about Dungeons and Dragons. The topic for today is Characters Resting in the Lost Mine of Fandelver. This is a question that has been roaming around for some time. I would like to point out that this particular video is a Dungeon Master Guide. It is not really suited as a player guide. I don't think it will hurt a lot of um, players by watching some aspects of it but because I have no intentions of telling you when there is a spoiler uh, frankly there will be spoilers in here so I would not hang around if you're a dungeon master you're in the right place if you're a player go and watch one of my other videos rather than this particular one until you have finished playing through the adventure that would be my advice to you a common question or common questions should I say I get from Dungeon Masters about player characters taking a short rest and a long rest and, and it's like where and when and every aspect and what are the consequences. So we're going to try to unpack all of that today in this video. So when can characters take a, a rest, whether that be a short rest or a long rest, when can they do that? The answer to that is there's actually multiple answers there isn't one answer the first thing I would say is characters can actually take a rest anytime they can take a long rest a short rest anytime it's a player choice okay it's not a dungeon master choice really this is actually something the players are doing with their characters but there might be con consequences for taking a short rest or a long rest uh, and that's the thing you've got to remember as a dungeon master and if you're a player you probably want to be remembering that as well but I would say this is the thing you need to follow up with as a dungeon master that's the first aspect they can do it anytime they like now if you have a look at the dungeon master's guide the dungeon master's guide states that one long rest and two short rests for every six to eight combat encounters in your adventuring day this is a I guess something that's been roaming around on the internet for some time a lot of people are aware of it a lot of people do not know anything about it and I can totally understand why they don't know anything about it but the reality is even though the dungeon master's guide states that a one long rest and two short rests for every six to eight combat encounters in your adventuring day that doesn't mean that translates into this is the thing you want to do in your game Okay, I just want to make that clear. I recommend ignoring the Dungeon Master Guide. Okay, why? Very few Dungeon Masters apply the Adventuring Day in their game or with their groups. And in fact, most groups are taking a long rest after having one to three combat encounters, including the designers. I would like to point out the designers do not use the Adventuring Day as listed in the Dungeon Master's Guide. And the reason they don't use this is because they don't measure and equate everything around experience points. They're all using milestones. So that has absolutely nothing to do with the way you would calculate uh, six to eight combat encounters and the adventuring day. So forget about that stuff would be my advice to you. It is just my advice. You do not need to listen to me. I am sure there is somebody out there who will say, uh, actually, Fred, um, I do that in my adventures and uh, with my group. I don't know what you're talking about. Let's get real. We are dealing with the Lost Mine of Fandelver. The, most, the majority of people are beginner dungeon masters or getting back into Dungeons and Dragons or beginner players. And as a result of that, they're not playing at this high level of play to these strict rules. That's my first thing I want to say. Okay, so we've answered the question and that is, the characters can take a rest whenever they like, but there's going to be a consequence. So where can the characters take a rest, whether that be a short rest or a long rest, where can they do that safely without having to worry about something trying to eat them or attack them or kill them? And there are about five different locations, general locations that I would say are going to work for you. I want to go over each one of them uh, separately. And, uh, and spell out all the things you might have to hopefully uh, um, have questions around. The first one is Fandolin. The town of Fandolin is probably a really good place to take a short rest or a long rest. The best place 
to do that would be the Stonehill Inn. And I've done a video about the Stonehill Inn. You're welcome to go and check it out. That would be the smart place to go and take a, a short rest or a long rest. Now there are other locations within Phandalin you could also take short and long rests, but that depends on how the players are interacting with the NPCs in that location. So there is some flexibility around this. Okay, what about another location? Say if they go out of the, uh, the Phandalin region. Let's say they're closer to Waterdeep or Waterdeep. Now that city is quite large. I would say something like the Yawning Portal would be a pretty good place to go and check out as a place of rest. There are many inns in Waterdeep, so you could use many of those without any significant problem, and you would be pretty safe as a player or a player character. There are, and in fact, other locations very similar to Waterdeep, and that is Neverwinter. Now, this is where the adventure essentially starts. Now, the city of Neverwinter has a inn called the Shining Serpent Inn. This would be my suggestion to you. Use this location as a place of rest. That's a pretty safe location. Yet again, there are many inns and taverns that they could stay at and be safe within Neverwinter. Okay, so what if they're going a bit further south for some other reason, for whatever reason, they've decided to travel further south and they're closer to something like Baldur's Gate. Now the city of Baldur's Gate has a place called the Blade and Stars. I would say that's probably the safest place to go. There are, yet again, many different inns and taverns in this location. The only problem with Baldur's Gate is it's a much a nastier and more dangerous location. Therefore, some of these places are probably not good to rest at. I'm not going to go into them. I'm just going to give you the ones that are going to be useful to you uh, in terms of what your players might want to try to do. And I'm trying to give you a sample so you know what to tell them where they could stay. Okay? You don't have to research the whole lot. Okay, so what about uh, that druid? Okay, anywhere that, read off the druid, and the Ruins of Thunder Tree is staying is probably a safe location to be. So follow the Druid, stay with him, your characters are probably going to be safe and they can take that short and long rest. Right, what about if they are in between adventures, they can't get back to a main town or city and they're nowhere near um, the Druid, where else could they stay? Well, the reality is that it could be any campsite that is hidden from wandering monsters and not a location that has hostile creatures around it. So they have to be selective. What sort of skill would you use for this if they are you know, selecting a location to, to camp out? I would use the survival skill. Go and use that because that'll probably help you determine uh, where they find or how good their campsite is. If you want to roll dice, you do not have to roll dice for them to actually find a campsite. All they need to do is say, I want a campsite that has a good view or is a safe location, and that might be a cave that's empty, it might be on top of a hill so they have a good view. There are lots of different ways of doing this, but as long as it's away from the main dungeon that they have been exploring, they're probably going to be all right. Now how far away is going to be up to you, I would say a good distance would be the smart way to go about doing things. Okay. If the players select a poor area or location to rest, I want you to, uh, to consider using wandering monsters. Have a wandering monster come into the campsite or their rest location to disturb their short rest and long rest. Now this is a strategy that has been used throughout all of the Dungeons and Dragons versions. Okay, Not all of the uh, locations within the Lost Mine of Fandelva have wandering monsters, but there are wandering monster uh, charts in the book that you could use. You could make your own up. Um, I've already done a video on wandering monsters, so you're welcome to go and check that video out. And I talked with Wally Dem in detail about wandering monsters, and that's probably a good place to go and have a look if you are interested in more information. So what about the locations that you might have problems with? Locations that still have hostile or dangerous monsters are likely to be the following. And I have eight locations that I want to talk about. 
and I'll give you my reasons why, and then you can make your decision about whether you believe me or not. <laughs> okay, so the first one, we'll start off with Cragmore Hideout. This is a medium-sized dungeon or cave complex. There is plenty of noise in this location, so that means that making noise is not a big issue. The problem is, because there are so few rooms or cavities or chambers in this location, the chances are that somebody is going to wander into a location and notice that somebody's been killed or uh, is missing. And so they might discover the party resting, whether that be a long rest or a short rest. So I would say it's probably not sensible to have them resting in this location if there are still goblins hanging around. If there's goblins there, it's probably not a safe place to be. And they're going to have to move further away from the Cragmore hideout and to take that rest and do so. Otherwise, hostile creatures are probably going to find them. Okay, number two, that is Cragmore Castle. Now, the problem with Cragmore Castle is it's a bit bigger. The complex is quite tightly packed. The number of creatures and monsters in the rooms are tightly packed. It's going to be very difficult to even explore this location without having the entire castle coming down on their head, let alone trying to rest in a location like this unless you have cleared it out completely. So I don't believe this is a good place to rest. They need to be resting away from the castle, probably in the forest or the bushes a good distance from that castle because there is, there's actually a, a, a patrol that's moving around that could wind up bumping into them. So, and they're orcs. I would suggest being very careful with this and uh, don't have them rest here. Not the right place to do it. Okay, number three, the Red Brand Hideout. This is a medium-sized complex. It doesn't have a lot of noise taking place in it. Uh, most of the rooms are relatively well tightly packed, but not completely. The only problem is this is a living space. Now, when you think about your own home, you move from room to room quite often. You probably don't stay in one location for just the entire hour. You're moving to back and forth from the toilet to the living room to the kitchen, uh, and, and to your bedroom to, to have a nap, whatever it might be. In all likelihood, you're going to be discovered if you try to rest here. So this is a bad place to rest, as far as I'm concerned, unless it's been cleared out. And the other thing is, you also have red brands that would be moving in and out of the hideout, who aren't necessarily, they might be in town, and they're coming back to the hideout to feed, or sleep, or do something else. Okay? All right. Number four is Agatha's Lair. This is Coneyberry. Literally impossible. There's no chance that the players are going to be able to stay out of the way of the Banshee. And the Banshee is really not a combat encounter. The Banshee is not designed to be so. Uh, therefore, they're not going to be killing no Banshee. Uh, the Banshee is just going to disappear and come back and hassle them later on if they hang around. And they are in a location that is actually quite wild. So that means there's potentially wild animals that will come across them, not just the Banshee. So Agatha's Lair, a very foolish place to try and take a short rest or a long rest. Okay, number five. This is the Old Owl Well. This is a very small open ruin. Okay, and because of that, and because there's a tent set up, and there's quite a few undead in this location, and there's a wizard, that means they're probably not going to be able to rest here unless they have resolved the issue, okay, with harm and cost. If they haven't resolved the issue with harm and cost, resting here won't work. But if they're mates, that would be different. They probably could rest here because, guess what, that wizard has control over the undead in this location. Otherwise, not a good place to camp. All right, and it's way too open. Next, we have number six. This is Wyventor. This is a very small cave. It's full of orcs, and it's got uh, an ogre in it. And there's no way you could possibly hope to camp and rest here. There's just nowhere to do it because it is so small. So not a good option at all. So move away from the cave. The players really need to move their characters quite a good distance away to make sure they aren't noticed by any orcs that might be roaming around the outside of the cave uh, opening. All right, number seven. This is the Ruins of Thunder Tree. 
it is heavily populated. Okay, there are lots of things. You've got um, plant creatures, you've got zombies, you've got the cult, and you've got a dragon of all things. And they're all roaming around. You can't really take a short rest or a long rest in this location. My advice to you is, if the players want to take a, a long rest or a short rest, they really need to move away from this location. You do, you do not need to bombard them with a really difficult combat. All you need to do is break that short rest to give them the message that this is not the place to rest. That's my advice to you, okay? Now, because the Druid is here, there is still the opportunity to meet up with the Druid and for the Druid to take them to a safer location further away from the Ruins of Thunder Tree where they could rest and take a short rest or a long rest and do so safely, which of course is the smart thing to do. Last one. This is number eight. This is Wave Echo Cave, the main location, the climax. And this place is infested with undead. There are lots of cavities, lots of chambers, lots of passageways. But that does not mean that it's a good place to camp out or rest. Now there is actually rules around how wandering monsters work in this location already. But my advice to you is don't present Wave Echo Cave as a location for taking a rest. I think you've got to start giving them the idea that I need to actually select a safer location. And I will do a video in the future for players on how to select a campsite that is actually going to be safe. This is not the video for that. This is for the Dungeon Master. So this is not a safe place to do any of that sort of thing. And monsters don't necessarily stay in one location unless the Dungeon Master deems that to be the case. Okay, there are consequences for characters resting uh, as long as there are hostile creatures still in a dungeon area and I've already explained uh, my rationale behind that. Now, why would that be the case? Now, the reason is they're going to be moving around. Uh, they will notice dead bodies. They will notice members that should be there who are no longer there. And then, of course, they've got to go and track them down. They will probably go and report to their boss first. And then they go on to high alert. So that's one of the consequences of a character resting in the middle of trying to complete a dungeon location. So what I want to do is I want to give you sort of a bit more meat and potatoes with regard to this adventure. So here are a few ways consequences can be applied to resting characters in your adventure. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just saying here are three ways you could do it and it's up to you to decide what you think is appropriate for your group because it does depend depend on the players in the group not the dungeon master as far as I'm concerned anyway. So the first one is the remaining monsters in the lair will be prepared for future infiltrating adventurers and as a result of that they will set up traps or have an ambush set up ready to go so that when they come back since they didn't eliminate all of the monsters or creatures in that location or deal with them. They don't have to kill them. They, they might just talk to them. Um, they will have an ambush ready to go. Now, this is suitable, I think, for intermediate and experienced players. This is an approach that's normally used by intermediate to experienced um, dungeon masters, and I would apply it to players in the same way. The second option is a bit harder. The dungeon master decides they will replace killed or missing monsters with new reinforcements, provided there are reinforcements to reinforce the location, and then they have them set up traps and an ambush waiting for the player's characters to come back. Now this is more suitable for an experienced group. Experienced players will understand this concept. It's probably not going to be the right move for a group of beginners, okay? And I know people believe that, or some people believe, that you need to present the right um, model and habits from the very get-go, but I think that you really need to get them familiar with the game before you start turning up the difficulty. And this is essentially what it's doing. And it doesn't always make sense to replace all the monsters anyway. 
some locations would not have reinforcements in, and so you would fall back on approach number one rather than approach number two. Okay, approach number three is the remaining monsters in the dungeon remain static until the player's characters return and it's like a saved video game. That means that there are no reinforcements, that doesn't mean that they have set up traps and they don't have ambushes and they're not prepared for the player's characters to come back into the dungeon location. This is better for beginners in my opinion. You don't have to keep doing this the whole way through the entire adventure. I think you will find that once they get a few levels behind them, you can probably shift to approach number one. But again, you have to make that decision based on the makeup of your group of players who are playing at the table. Okay, three specific questions and consequences that might take place as a result of short resting and long resting in the Lost Mine of Fandelva. I'm going to answer these questions so I don't have to keep answering them because it's getting old. The first one is, resting without saving Sildar Hallwinter first in the Cragmore hideout will likely result in the man being killed and eaten by goblins. That's probably what's going to happen. Yimmick is probably going to put him to the sword or to the knife and they're going to roast him in the goblin den. Uh, seems terrible and horrible, but it is a consequence of not getting to Sildar first. All right, and I know the players won't necessarily know that Sildar is in that location, but if they have a rough time at the very beginning of the cave and they don't get to Sildar, Sildar is probably dead. You don't have to do it this way, I'm just suggesting these are probably natural consequences of resting. Okay, next one. I have to say, um, whoops, wrong one. Resting without saving Gundren Rockseeker first. If you don't save Gundren Rockseeker first in the Cragmore Castle, it will likely lead to the dwarf being tortured and the time frame for torture being sped up if they're already in the process of doing that or they haven't started it. And then he'll get killed, he'll get eaten by goblins and replaced by a doppelganger since there's a doppelganger there. And that would be anticipation of somebody trying to track down Gundren Rockseeker because I'm sure that they will assume that that could possibly happen. And it would be, of course, entirely useful to the Cragmore tribe to have Gundren Rockseeker show up in Phandalin and continue on as if everything had pretty much been the same and nothing had changed, even though he is dead. That would be a natural consequence of uh, Gundren not being rescued. Okay, the last one. Um, resting without saving Nundro Rockseeker. That's the last brother that um, Gundren has that is still alive. If you don't rescue Nundro first in Wave Echo Cave, I would say it's likely that uh, it's going to mean that the dwarf is going to get tortured. The time frame will be sped up. He'll get killed, put to the sword, and then eaten by giant spiders because Nesna has giant spiders and then replaced by a doppelganger for anybody who comes around this particular location or claim and is assuming that the rock seekers are still laying claim to this particular area. And there is a doppelganger in this location, so as a dungeon master, you could do it. That would be a natural consequence of trying to rest in that location, which means because the cave location is so large and they will probably have to rest short or long, that Nundro will never survive the process and you're going to wind up Nundro being a doppelganger. I've already done a video on doppelgangers in the Lost Mine of Fandelva, so you're welcome to go and check that out. It is still up to you as a dungeon master. You do not need to do things the way I have suggested. I am hoping this has answered all the questions that you had about resting in the Lost Mine of Fandelva for player characters. If it has, fantastic. I have a series of videos on the Lost Mine of Fandelva for the Dungeon Master, which will help you fill out your characters and do a lot of different things. And you're welcome to go and check those out. Otherwise, if you're not into that sort of thing, I have hundreds of videos for players and Dungeon Masters on every aspect of the game of Dungeons and Dragons. If you want to support the channel so I keep doing video content like this, you can do that through my Patreon page. The affiliate Amazon links down in my descriptions of my videos. 
the merchandise shelf underneath all of my videos or just watch my videos, that's fine too. Make sure to share, like and subscribe. Hit the bell button to be notified when I go live and when I publish new videos. And hey, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.